All right. Good evening. My name is Tristan Steinberger, and my idea for a business is a fresh pasta store that distributes, that makes pasta and distributes it to local restaurants. And the reason I came up with this idea is because my family is Italian, and we make fresh pasta at home all the time. On holidays, just eat. And whenever I go to restaurants, Italian restaurants, I wish they would have fresh pasta. It would be much better, and that experience would be more authentic. And I think it's a great source, a great business idea. So first, first I want to get an idea of who has actually had fresh pasta. Very few of you. Yeah, I'm upset. <laughs> and fresh pasta is better not only because the ingredients are fresh, it's semolina, eggs, and flour. The reason it's better is when you put the sauce on it, it absorbs the sauce much better and enhances the flavor. So that's why I don't understand why a, a luxury, I know some, some stores try to make the fresh pasta flavor intensive, but if they can make all the pasta fresh, they'll enhance the flavor, enhance the quality of the product, of the, and enhance the restaurant. And that, and that is the strength of my business. I'm making a product pasta, which is much better than what's out there right now. It's fresh. Um, and so my, my goal is clear, is to make a quality pasta. My, my focus is quality, but I also focus on cost. However, I want to get a consumer base that will understand. And I put satisfaction here because a person gets, will start eating fresh pasta because they want to be satisfied. They're not satisfied with dry pasta. They'll have, find the greatest satisfaction with fresh pasta. And I've spoken to local restaurants. In Columbus Park, I spoke to Pangofini, Erosso, Al Dente, and Bucci. And they all told me they're interested. And they've all, Pangofini has actually started a trial run where they, and they say it's really labor intensive. And they're actually interested in a business that will provide them with fresh pasta. Rozzo was kind of more, they kind of, uh, they were on the offensive. They want to know about the cost and everything. However, they did seem interested in trying to get their cost uh, appealing, uh, have an appealing cost. And as I mentioned, some stores are in trial runs, such as Pangofini, and Pangofini is actually expanding other stores have found that labor intensive, like Al Dente, Garozzo, and they want a business that can provide them fresh pasta. And so right now is a critical point to actually make this business and they get partners. However, I did meet some resistance. I don't know if you guys have heard uh, of Bellinopoly in uh, Brookside. I spoke to the head chef, Alex, and he wasn't interested in fresh pasta. The reason being is because he likes to make the pasta himself, and he, he believes he can make it different. However, I feel this provides me with an opportunity. I could tailor the pasta for each restaurant. For instance, with Alex, I can make egg noodles, spinach pasta, bagel pasta, and make it to his specific requirements. I can do that for each, each different restaurant. And so awareness, however, is my greatest threat. I don't know what four people here have tried fresh pasta. It just shows you that most people in the Midwest, particularly, have not had fresh pasta. And it's critical for people to know about fresh pasta and know that's better than dry pasta. There's a better alternative. And my idea is to gain greater exposure so I can cater with the business, I could cater to events, partner with local restaurants, cater to events. I could even provide free demos to local restaurants. And even, I thought of this, um, an idea where on the plaza, for instance, I could have a an Italian kind of a restaurant get together where they provide samples, free samples of people, it's on a weekend, 
and they try to resample fresh pasta, let them try their new products, and see what people think, and just create a buzz. That's really what you need to do, just create a buzz. The other threat is Papadella. And that this is a fresh pasta business, business from Denver, and they provide pasta to Whole Foods and the farmer's market. However, they don't, don't even touch restaurants. And that's why my focus is on the restaurants. And Parker there, they also doesn't have, don't have the local knowledge or anything really. They don't have this, they franchise actually for the farmer's market. So I, I don't think they would actually encroach on <coughs> the territory. And, and if my business grows accordingly, I would like to expand under the umbrella of authentic Italian, Italian experience by providing homemade sauces. And this works similar, similar to fresh pasta. I can either provide it to restaurants. I know restaurants will pick you on their sauces and they like making their own, their own way. However, I could sell it in the store. Ultimately, though, I feel KC needs fresh pasta. They need it. And they need to work and they need a business to work with local restaurants. Are, any questions? Are there any questions? Yeah. I see a lot of things I like. I like that um, local is really a hot word now. That, they, that's really good. Um, the independent restaurants that I know, that's all, that's all a green, green light too because they can make an instant decision. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there's real passion there, and that whole, that whole, it, there's a story here, you know, with, the, with who you are and the rest. That, well, I don't know, I don't know the I would, I wouldn't see, I wouldn't see the markets of Papardelli. Uh, Whole Foods take, Whole Foods takes a lot of pride in saying I'm a local, and they'll, they'll know that this is a, a yeah. local thing. So you could quite easily get on the same shelf space by arguing that you know I'm a Kansas City company, and, yeah. and you'll get a little special tag saying <coughs> I'm a local to, to draw people to you. So I wouldn't see that market. <coughs> Um, I do, I am, and it's something we talked about in class, changing consumer behavior. So we have so many people who are complacent about like, uh, just the dry pasta. Mm -hmm. I think you're onto something with demos, having testimonials, having people actually say, the blind taste test or whatever, yeah. you know, like try this, try this with some of the fresh pasta. And I think that sort of uh, visceral reaction from people is what's going to change the world and say, oh, by the way, these are the only restaurants in town that have fresh pasta and they are by mine. So I think it was an easy transition. You liked it? Okay, well you can buy it here or you can buy it for me. So I think you have two channels. You can sell to the restaurants but I can see people buying it for me too. Yeah. And it's hard. I just feel it's hard to have, make it for restaurants and also sell it. It's almost like having two businesses I feel. But I, I feel in the future it would be quite a So startup costs. So I, I mean I I think I worked it out where I have to sell 60 pounds per week to break even. My rent, I, sit, I approximated around $800. I don't need a big space. Is uh, that a commercial kitchen space? No, that's just a rent. I mean, I don't really need a commercial. You just need a space. space. I just need space. Okay. Yeah. Both the pop right there, they sell pasta for $9 at Whole Foods. I believe I, I don't need the packaging or the stuff. Retail. I can get seven, maybe even lower. I can make it for two, three dollars. Ultimately, that works out. Sixty pounds per week, just to break even. You have to get it there. Yeah, well, you have to transport it. No, I found this. Honest, I could buy. Some people told me, "Oh, you need a refrigerated truck." Well, I think I could get a cooler. <laughs> it's a large enough cooler and use a French <laughs> truck and transport it. Initially, at least to restaurants. Yeah, once I build it up. Yeah, I could get a refrigerated truck. I, I may have cut off your answer, but how long is fresh pasta fresh? About a month. A month. You can go long, you can freeze, you can go longer though. But if you want to have real fresh, better taste, I'd go for a month. I didn't think it would be that long. I didn't know it was going to tell you were going to say a week or like. You, know, you can freeze it. If, you're, if you don't freeze it, a week. Is there a taste uh, effect in freezing? It's like the coffee, I'm sure a connoisseur you'll notice it. Sounds mismarket. 
<laughs> so 60 pounds a week, um, uh, you said that's your break even, so, so what does that cost? How many man hours are in that 60 pounds? Man hours? <coughs> I assume it would be, I would start myself. Production man hours? I didn't tell man hours. Let's say how much does it cost to make, how much time does it take to make one pound pasta? One we'll time? Yeah, we'll multiply that by 60. Uh, I could make pasta for five people, for my family. I could do it in less than maybe 45 minutes. 45 minutes a pound, is that a pound? <coughs> Two pounds in an hour. Okay. So, but hours. Is there an advantage to making more at one time? Like, I mean, can you do that in large? You can buy a machine. Yeah. I can buy a machine in one side. It's $40,000. And, and, and my second question was, how, how, how many pounds of pasta if you were, I don't know if you would provide all the pasta for a restaurant or just part of it? How, how many pounds of pasta does uh, a time restaurant go through? It's got to be hundreds a week. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much they go through. I assume they won't when they won't want to transition all the way to fresh pasta. They'll have to be a slow transition. I I looked at it. I took the right of pure oil, pure oil, so I'm a I was active. I I I worked up to 120 pounds a week between those four, maybe 30 people a night. Uh, those are just approximations. I don't know how they'll vary. I think if your if your cost is there where it's not significantly more in their customers really because it's a selling point for them, they can say, as I told you when I was at the, the booth, they have a sign outside mm -hmm. in Westport that says we make our own pasta and pizzas. And so I think it's a selling point for them. So they may just transition and do that trial and say, We're gonna do it for ninety days, we're gonna say fresh pasta because otherwise the menu will say, Well, this side we're we're serving fresh pasta, the other side is not fresh pasta. Yeah. So I, I could see on the, on the menu side that would create a problem if they didn't transition over for a while to see how it went. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it can't hurt to try. And that's why I think you found some openness with a little bit of resistance, because they yeah. haven't, there, there hasn't been a business offering this to them, so. I went to that Dean and DeLuca, and see, there's just some misconception. Yeah, I went to them and asked them, do you have any fresh pasta? They're like, no, we don't. All it is is dry pasta with water. And it's just, you need to make people aware that it's, it's better. <laughs> Did you bring any demos? <laughs> 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 they just went back here. Yeah. <laughs> so, would that qualify as healthy food? I'd <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe if you made me a whole grain, whole grain pasta. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah.